so today in this video as you can see i'm going to show you the uh the clinical photograph of a koh mount of the mucor mycosis uh, the mucor fungus and the aspergillosis aspergillus fungus so i i had a patient recently of whom i did a nasal endoscopy the patient was covid positive and uh, i did the nasal endoscopy uh, so i'm going to be in short of how the nasal endoscopy of the patient went uh, i took a middle turbinate biopsy for which the patient did not have any bleeding and i did not use any local anesthesia or the surface anesthesia for the diagnostic nasal endoscopy so the patient did not have any pain sensation whatsoever inside and both the sides the middle meatal area was full of necrotic pus so what i did i i tried to remove whatever necrosed area the necrosed tissues the patient was having in the both nasal cavities as you can see this is a petri dish and what you can see all the necrosed tissues i tried to collect along with the eshkar and along with you can see a small area of the middle terminal biopsy was also taken for the koh mount now this was also a sample for which i sent to the histopath department for biopsy to rule out the invasion of the mucor fungus into the tissues in the vessels so this is basically uh, what protocol we have to follow if there is any suspicious case of mucor uh, post covid uh, this patient was actually COVID positive just 10 days into COVID treatment and this patient started having a uh, fronto frontal headache, temporoparietal headache, left sided orbital pain as well. However, the orbital involvement was not seen. The orbital movements were also normal. The vision was completely intact. So the CT scan of the patient was done and it was suggestive a lot of um, uh, changes, collection in the sinuses on both sides, mostly in the ethmoids. Uh, but there was no erosion of the lamina papyracea yet but there was clinical evidence of on the CT scan the uh, necrosis and erosions of the bone in the ethmoid and the nasal septum so on the nasal endoscopy it was diagnosed as a suspect of mucor and when the KOH mount came this is what was the result so this slide as you can see over here is a typical finding of the uh, mucor species as you can see this is the uh, the sporangia and these are the multiple spores of the mucor species so as you can see there are multiple this is the body of the shaft the hyphae of the mucor and you can see this is uh, typically the spores of the uh, the mucor species so this is just the koh mount the potassium hydroxide mount uh, looked under the microscope uh, but this result usually comes in four to five hours of the uh, the tissue sampling this very same day the fastest method or microbiological method you can have to detect the presence of any fungi inside so this was a unique case for me although recently a lot of cases we are seeing of mixed infection that is this patient is of both mucor mycosis along with aspergillosis so as you can see this slide this slide uh, belongs to the uh, aspergillus now as as you can see over here this is the same koh mount but in a different uh, area different area of uh, you know the field of study but the same uh, koh mount you can see this is a aspergillus uh, species over here and this is the uh, mixed case of mixed infection where both the aspergillus and mucor was seen together so if i can show you this one this is also a kh mount where you can see the typical septations this these the, these are the septations of the fungi as you can see over here now this is basically aspergillus now aspergillus are basically septate okay they are narrow septate and they have an acute angulation which is i guess around 45 degree angulation over here so if something looks like this it has to be aspergillosis and i also do have a case of uh, mucor so this is as you can see over here these are non-septate these are broad and they are angulated at around 90 degrees branching so this is typically of a mucor finding and mucor most probably causes obliterative uh, necrosis in the blood vessels so when i did the diagnostic nasal endoscopy of the patient i took a biopsy from the middle turbinate the patient did not have even a single drop of bleeding which was highly suggestive of obliterative necrosis of the entire tissue in the middle turbinate also there was a lot of necrotic pus coming from the middle meatal area 
so this is how basically I wanted to show you how the mucor and the aspergillosis can be together in the in the same patient and can have a concurrent infection so both of these infections can be present at the same time in the same patient uh, and this can be really deadly if not treated in a proper given time so uh, in this case even though uh, now in post covid situation we always have to consider the patient to be suffering from a mucor infection if at all suggestive of fungus and you should never start the patient on injection voriconazole being the drug of choice for aspergillosis infection because the injection voriconazole can you know increase the virulence of the the mucor fungi and can be even more deadly for the patient so always always start the patient as soon as the koh report comes or even if sometimes the koh report comes out as negative may not show the proper growth of the mucor on the koh or the culture but sometimes you need to know how clinically on endoscopy and on MRI findings you need to know how the fungus looks like I have done this in my previous videos so you can go and check that video out so even if you feel that the MRI is suggestive of fungal changes uh, clinically also if you think the f uh, it shows features of mucormycosis infection the diagnostic nasal endoscopy also uh, shows somewhat changes of mucormycosis or any fungal necrotic changes you should consider that patient for your brightman even though the KOH may sometimes come as negative so empirically you start the patient on injection liposomal amphotericin B depending upon the involvement you can start the patient off with minimum 5 mg per kg per day and so in this case we were lucky enough to have the positive KOH reports as soon as possible and then we could start the patient on injection liposomal amphotericin B as soon as we could. So this was the patient. Uh, this was the findings of the microbiological point of view. A surgeon needs to know. So I hope you found this video really helpful. If you have any doubts or queries, you can, be free, you can just feel free to leave a message in the comment section below. I'll be able to, you know, just reply to all of your queries. So thank you guys.